The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third preparatory webinar for members and partners of local governments and municipal authorities constituency, taking place today on the 29th August. Uh, this webinar will uh, be facilitated by myself. My name is Ji San Huang, Senior Climate Advocacy Officer at Ikle World Secretariat. I'll be moderating today's webinar, and on behalf of ICLE, I would like to extend my heartfelt welcome to all of you. I would like to start by giving you a short uh, instru instructions on the technical aspect of today's webinar. First of all, uh, you are automatically muted in this webinar, and I would like to kindly ask that you remain muted during the whole proceedings of the presentations for a, a smooth proceeding. Secondly, if you have any questions, you have the option of typing in your questions within the, uh, the panel that you have as part of this webinar device. And then as the moderator, I will make sure that your, your questions are uh, taken on board at the end of the uh, presentations during the questions and answers session. Lastly, but not least, uh, this webinar is being recorded. And at the end of this webinar, the recording of this webinar will then be shared with everyone online uh, for the sake of transparency and openness and the uh, sharing of information in a facilitated manner. With that, I would like to move on to introducing today's panelists. First of all, let me introduce Mr. Yunus Arikan. He is the Head of Global Policy and Advocacy at ICLE World Secretariat. He is also the Local Governments and Municipal Authorities Constituency Focal Point to the UNFCCC. Next, let me introduce Ms. Suzanne Nolden. She's a government official at the City of Bonn. She works in the areas of international affairs and global sustainability. Now with that, I would like to hand over to Yunus for his presentation. Yunus, over to you. Thank you. Um, thank, um, thank you, Jisun, for the introduction. I'm just opening my uh, presentation. There was uh, uh, um, that the, the previous version was already there. So just give me one second. Uh, yeah. So uh, now we are all okay. And I hope you can see my screen at the moment. Um, so um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all colleagues who are joining us. Um, it's a pleasure to, to meet you again. Uh, today we will have uh, a dialogue that will be constructed around four main agenda items. First, we will share some updates since the last time we had met through our webinar, the second webinar on the 22nd of June. Then we will briefly go through the COP agenda, official UNFCC agenda. And then we will primarily focus on the, the agenda of local and regional governments, which will be built around the Leaders Summit, the Cities and Regions Pavilion, and the Summit Dialogues. And, and we will also touch briefly on upcoming events. Um, so uh, what happened since the last time we met? It was uh, in, for the Northern Hemisphere relatively uh, a low profile period because of the summer uh holidays so um in terms of uh progress there were a couple of events uh taking place in whereas part of the world and uh, this includes um the africa carbon forum in benin cotano uh, desertifications in strasbourg uh, eco cities summit in melbourne australia and uh, the personal visit of mayor of bonn to La Paz and Bogota. In all these events, the, the COP23 and the agenda of local energy programs were prominently presented, which was helpful for us to increase the participation. Uh, an important event was held in Suwa, Fiji, which is the, 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 the capital city of the Fiji government and, and who is host the presidency of the COP23. So they come in the first, the inaugural Climate Action Pacific Partnership. Uh, on the 3rd and 4th of July, and the local governments and municipal authorities constituency was represented by Steve Goller, Ikle Oceana, the regional director, and Karibato Taoba, uh, Pacific director of Commonwealth Local Government Forum. 
uh, on the first week of July, we had witnessed the, the evolution of the heads of state of summit of the G20. Uh, this was a milestone event because it became clear that there will be one party and the rest of the 19 other uh, major economies of the world had uh, demonstrated their commitment to Paris Agreement, which was a good signal for the rest of the world and especially for us who are trying to push the, the climate action forward. Uh, this justifies once again why COP23 in Bonn is this year very important. Um, during the during the summer period, UNSS Secretariat assigned quotas for accredited organization for the access to Bula Zone. Uh, there were applications for side events and they're in the merging, merging process. And this year, UNSCC Secretariat also introduced a new concept or new process where non-accredited entities or organizations can also apply for hosting side events. And this is basically the, the, the mode or the structure the way the, the bond zone is built, which is much more open and inclusive. And then these organizations will start to apply and, and they will also start to discuss with the other partners to merge their events so that they, the full list of side events are clear. Um, during the, the last couple of weeks, uh, the, uh, the COP presidency, the Fijian government have announced uh, United for climate as the hashtag for the, the for the COP, we as local and regional governments and, and the, the constituency, we strongly endorse this approach and we also revised our communication channels. In the next couple of weeks, we will have additional consultations, whether we would announce another unique hashtag for our summit, but for the moment, uh, we also endorse Uniting for Climate and we encourage all partners to use this as the hashtag for their announcements towards COP. Uh, 23. Um, in terms of our partners in the Global Advisory Group, um, we have circulated the second batch of invitations. We will go through this list. Um, we have announced the pavilion space, and this will be a discussion today, at the Bond Zone uh, for Cities and Regions Pavilion. Uh, and we have updated citiesandregions.org as the the, the, the the communication channel for the summit and the agenda. Uh, and maybe you have noticed we have adopted a new logo for the summit and uh, we have also revised our flyer. Uh, so this will be used from the from the next steps onwards in terms of uh, our visual identity for the summit, which symbolizes a strong synergy with COP23 logo in terms of uh, colors and try to signify uh, the, the role of local and regional governments, but also highlight the, the connection between Rhine and the city of Bonn and North Rhine-Westphalia as also the hosts of the, of the COP. That is the spirit behind the, the logo of the summit. Um, when we get back to uh, the, the invitations so far, we can probably say that we have reached with our partners and the, the, the Secretariat to more than 1,600 um, uh, local and regional governments worldwide, uh, they received personal invitations to their mayors, governors, or other levels, other political leaders. Um, you may notice we have the highest number of percentage is for Europe. It is normal because we're in the land uh, European continent. But you will have, uh, have also seen that a significant amount of invitations have been circulated to Africa, small island states, especially in Pacific and Caribbean and other other countries as well. Uh, we sincerely hope the, the level of participation will also be balanced. And um, for the third round of invitations, we will uh, circulate another round of invitations, this time not necessarily only political leaders, but high level staff of the respective cities, regions, as well as the networks. So that will be circulated in the mid-September. If we look at uh, what is the two weeks, or more than two weeks this time, uh, what will happen in Bonn during the COP, uh, it would be good to recap this so that we can have a better understanding of our own agenda in the COP. Um, the, this year, uh, which was a practice that started in May, uh, the UNFCC uh, negotiated, especially the, the, uh, the Paris Agreement uh, track, uh, we'll start with preparatory workshops and roundtables on 4th to 6th of November, which is mainly Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. The difference is that 
these uh, meetings are in general open for parties only so observers are not invited to these meetings it may be possible if if there's a change but for the moment these are parties only uh, on monday the official openings will will be held uh, you have uh, noticed there will be uh, five main work streams uh, technical bodies uh, political uh, conference of parties of convention kyoto protocol and, and paris agreement uh, the first week uh, we will see the the technic thematic events of marrakesh partnership on different topics between 10 to 12th of november uh, in the second week we will start with the high level events of partner uh, marrakesh partnership which will focus on sdg 11 and sdg on sdg 2 on 13 and 14th of november and uh, starting from Wednesday onwards, there will be the high-level segment of the UNFCC, which is the ministerial segment that will conclude with the decisions adopted at COP. For the after this overall view, we maybe we can now turn back to Susan Nolden, where she can take us through the latest updates on our uh, the agenda of the Climate Summit of Local and Regional Leaders. And Thank Susan, you. the floor is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Yunus, uh, for this comprehensive overview. And um, well, we complete we directly step into the 12th of November, which is the Sunday between the two negotiation weeks. Uh, normally, the Sunday is closed in COPS. There will be no negotiations. However, we have the extraordinary situation that the bond zone one of the two conference zones has been opened for us and that upon invitation of patricia espinoza we are able to use the plenary of the bond zone the biggest plenary with space for 500 participants in the room plus uh, an eventual overflow room uh, if we don't manage to fit everybody in there so this is a great asset for us and the first time uh, this kind of a conference of non-state uh, stakeholders is admitted into the conference zone. The, day, the one day program will be quite condensed, as you may assume. Um, those of you who were, who were present in the webinars before and in the um, consultation in the town in our town hall in May will know that we have focused on four themes which will be picked up on in six consecutive sessions the four themes just to recall the titles are different on the sheet because we of course uh, worked on them and elaborated them with the fine-tuning uh, we are working on holistic approaches to uh, mainstream and link the global agendas in our uh, cities and regions. We are working on uh, co collaboration with businesses, civil societies and other groups within our jurisdictions. We are joining our forces in partnership for climate action in particular with least developed countries, with small island states, developing small island states, and uh, in the global south, in particular Africa. And we will talk, of course, about vertical integration, uh, about scaling up action and bringing the different levels of governance closer together, in particular when it comes to the revision of the coming NDCs. So these topics um, were taken up in the, in the four thematic panels, starting with holistic approaches over collaboration, over partnership, coming to vertical integration. In the dramaturgy, these four technical panels will be framed by a high-level opening and a high-level closing session. In the high-level opening, uh, we target having, for example, the German Minister for the Environment. We target having a high-level uh, representative of the Fijian Presidency, while in the and uh, we target having high-level representatives also of um, the subnational level uh, in the U.S., for example. While in the closing, uh, we hope for a, a good representation of parties and the UN sector as well. 
in the format, the opening will be a like series of contributions and thematic impulses taking us deep into the matter, while the closing will pick up on what happened the day, lead to a joint um, outcome declaration and um, connect us to to the big COP, to the high level segment, because of course we will communicate the outcomes on the day to the parties, to the UNFCCC secretariat, but it will be brought to high level events during COP23 in the following week as well. Um, a question raised this morning in the other um, panel was the format of the panels and the initiatives. We try to make it quite interactive. Um, during the panels, we would love to have um, a compilation of short um, media parts as well, not only spoken contributions, so short clips would be welcome, while the initiatives should, of course, have kind of a key visual or photo which could be projected. Um, let's say that the initiatives have not been selected now. Um, there is there are proposals of initiatives already, but this floor is still open. Not all of the proposed initiatives might be presented in speaking on the stage, but um, we'll find a way to make them visible or within the uh, summit or within also the pavilion. I think that that much for a short overview and in the question and answer section, I'll be happy to answer questions and we'll be most happy to see you in Bonn at this summit hosted jointly by the Minister President of North Rhine-Westphalia, Armin Laschet and the Mayor of Bonn, Ashok Sridharan. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, you thank you, Susan. Uh, sorry, Ines. Uh, be before before we resume your pr part of the presentation, uh, just a connection issue was raised by Nat. Nat, I just unmuted you. Do you still have problems uh, listening, or, or is it is it fine now? The connection. No, it's it's much better. Much thank better. You. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Ines. Over to you. So thanks, Susan. Um, this was uh, an overview of the summit. But since the beginning of the year, we are uh, uh, preparing ourselves that summit will be literally in terms of our participation and, and deliverables as the peak. But uh, we will also have uh, aiming. We will, we will also aim for a more uh, de detailed uh, engagement through the the bond zone. And we are happy that over the past weeks, our efforts and the consultations are concluded, and um, we will now. Uh, be able to ensure a space in the bond zone which will be announced or branded as cities and regions pavilion as a follow-up of our experience in Copenhagen in 2009 in Marrakesh as well in, in Paris especially was the most uh, strongest example but we also had a similar experience in 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 part in Marrakesh in 2016 uh, this time because of the limitations or the the, the, the uniqueness of the conditions we will have um, a, a space which is around 75 meters square in size, which is a bit less than what we have seen in, in Paris, but a bit more than what we have seen in Marrakesh. Um, this time, UNFCC requests all those um, organizers to organize their events in a soundproof area. Therefore, we would have to arrange a, a certain closed meeting space which can accommodate around 50 to 60 people in terms of the audience. And there will be, of course, speaking uh, spaces allocated as well as a, a screen that to show any any document or any, any files that could give this opportunity for interaction. In this slide, you can see a basic uh, tentative layout, which, which also has an exhibit space, which is open. I just wanted to flag once again that this is the place where which is the the walking distance, walking route from the entrance to the to the exhibit space and then to the side events. Therefore, we assume there will be a pretty good visibility of our our constituency. Uh, and the important thing is that this will be open for two weeks, including Sunday. Uh, and of course, uh, with the presence of this space, 
we have to consider some of the plans for the summit, but as well as to the, the dialogues, which will also refer next step. Um, as, as this slot is, as this space is a bit smaller in size, uh, we would like to prioritize the engagement of the partners of the, the Global Advisor Group and also LGMA members. So this week and in the next couple of days or, or by the latest next week, uh, our partners will receive a template so that they can propose events they would like to host in this space. And um, we would like to make a preliminary list uh, by the mid-September uh, so that we can discuss how much we can advance further. Um, there's one thing for sure. Uh, the daily briefings, which we usually traditionally have at 9 a.m. in the morning in the UNFCC COP meetings, this will also be held in this room. Um, so we would be able to uh, go through the agenda and then, uh, especially also in the negotiations on the blue zone, what's going on and our, our positions, but also it's an opportunity for us to review the day before and also the, the, the agenda of that day, which is the traditional format. Um, that is how we plan to have uh, the pavilion active uh, throughout the two weeks. Uh, and as we have mentioned in previous webinars, we assume there will be some events before the summit on the 12th and some events after the summit, which will complement uh, what we would be um, uh, achieving in terms of some of those events will feed into the climate summit, a leader summit. But some of the events will be also an opportunity for us to share the outcomes. So therefore, between 9 to 14 or 8 to 15 of November, which is around a week of, of, of activities, we will be having a number of events. Uh, some of them will be in the bond zone, either at the cities and regions pavilion or some parties uh, like EU, Japan, uh, or, 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 or Morocco, so some other friendly countries would also open their doors for local and regional governments. We are aware of that. Um, some of those events will be outside on the, at the, of the Bonn zone. Uh, in the city of Bonn, there will be several uh, venues. Um, so we are now uh, trying to map which events are taking place, and we will be reaching out to our partners to make sure some of those original ideas of events can be also held in the pavilion. And we will be expecting that we will be making a preliminary list to announce at, at mid-September so that we can see uh, which events are taking place on what, which date and where. Uh, with this, we'd like to reach out to our uh, conclusion, the last slide of our, our, our summit, of our, of, of our today's webinar. This will cover mainly the deadlines on the, over the next couple of days and the particular events. Um, first of all, uh, the accredited organizations will be able to nominate their, uh, let's say, delegations to the NFCC for Bond Zone. Uh, and then in response, in one week's time or so, they will receive their quotas from the NFCC. This will be in particular important because uh, our accreditation to the Bond Zone on, during the summit day, we have to make sure that there is no overlap. Uh, so we will have to consult with our partners. If there are already delegations who are registered to the bond zone, we will have to make a special arrangement for that. Uh, over the week, uh, there will be a side event applications for non-accredited entities so that they can also make their events publicly available and, and, and or if possible merge with other applications. Uh, September will be heavily involving a number of events globally uh, we will start with the in New York City, in New York City at the UN headquarters, the high-level meeting on UN habitat and and the new urban agenda. This event will have certain consequences in terms of the global governance and the global uh, interconnections between the global agendas. Um, there will be a debate on local renewables in Japan. Uh, in mid-September, we would like to advance with invitations and draft agendas of pavilion and dialogues. Uh, climate chance will be held on in Agadir on 11th to 13th of September, as well as uh, additional uh, meetings of the Marrakesh Partnership. There will be also an OECD Global Forum. The, one of the sessions will be on non-party stakeholders, engagement of, uh, of the non-party stakeholders in the UNFCC process, which is very close to our discussions. So we will be there as well. And on the 12th of September, there will be a COP 
uh, the climate, uh, the conference of parties of the desertification uh, secretariat or desertification uh, process. This year, there will be a local local authorities roundtable, which will see participation of um, Kali, mayors of Kalimane, Strasbourg, and 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 Bonn, uh, and some others possibly. It will be a good opportunity to introduce the debate at this level as well. Uh, during the climate, we are expecting that a number of events will be hosted by partners, networks. Uh, more information can follow soon. Um, at the end of September, we will schedule a fourth webinar so that we, we keep ourselves updated on progress and introduce other elements. Uh, in October, we will have the Ecomobility Congress. Uh, there will be the deadline for submissions for Cities IPC conference to be held in, in, Mon in Edmonton in March 2018. Uh, on the same day, we will also close our registrations for summit. Uh, in October, there will be another session in Malmö, focusing on coastal zone and ocean uh, and cities. Uh, at pre-COP, we are expecting to have a, a good delegation. Uh, there will probably be invitations to local and, and, and regional leaders, and there will be a probably possibly a preparatory meeting of the constituencies with the. Uh, the UNFCC delegations and the presidency. Uh, in October, we will see the OECD Mayors Forum, which will focus on inclusive uh, cities, uh, as well as a climate uh, forum uh, hosted by Mayor of Seoul uh, with the other partners, including ICLE uh, and others. Um, and on the end of October, we would see the the bond zone and bullet zone registration list to be closed so that they receive all their documents preferably in advance so that they apply for visas and of course we should maybe probably update this file with the specific focus that on in october we will have the world cities day we will have the habitat day and also on the fourth so at the beginning of the month uh, the world habitat day on the 5th of october 31st of october for the Cities Day, World Cities Day, and on the 14th of October, we will have the the International Standardization Day, which will have a theme on cities, uh, smart cities. These are also the highlights in October. Uh, with this, we'd like to conclude our, our, our inputs, and we're open for questions and answer, or even remarks from our partners. Uh, just to recap here, you can see the, the overview with our logo and highlights as the Climate Summit on, of local and regional leaders on the 12th of november sunday summit dialogues on, uh, on 9 to 14 and cities and regions probably for two weeks with a diverse uh, group of partners uh, and endorsers and we will be featuring of course the global initiatives like global covenant of mayors and and the two coalition the overall event is supported by cop 23 presidency uh, the whole events are supported or co-hosted by city of bonn and state of north and westphalia we will have a special partner, uh, German Minister of Development and Cooperation, uh, as well as German Minister of Environment for the specific pavilion agenda. With this, uh, I'd like to hand over to Jisun to lead us in terms of the interaction with our participants of the webinar. Thank you, Yunus, uh, for your informative presentation. And thank you also to Susan uh, for sharing us uh, updates on the uh, program dimension of the uh, summit. Um, at the moment, uh, there is no further questions written on the questions uh, pane. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is now open to receive any questions for us, the organizers. So if you have any questions or comments, you simply can uh, put push the button of the hand so that you could address the questions yourselves or you can uh, uh, type in the questions. But at the moment, I see no hand raised and no questions in the questions box. So I suggest we uh, take this opportunity to maybe give the floor over to Susan to provide us uh, with further updates on the uh, um, well, I have a question uh, at the moment uh, from Angie, so let me read it. Uh, given the larger space available on the uh, 12th November, will the summit be open to others beside the elected officials? Uh, Yunus referred already to this, Angie. Um, Yunus, told, Yunus told us uh, a couple of minutes ago that the third batch of invitation will also be 
um, be open to high-ranking city and region officials other than, than the elected. So this is a hand, hand selection uh, by the networks and by our partners. So please feel free to submit, submit a suggestion list to the World Secretariat. And maybe we can also highlight uh, during the summit, we will be having the event in the Bonn Zone, which will be open for all accredited uh, participants of the UNFCC. Uh, and we have a space uh, limitation, of course, 500 people. Therefore, we will apply certain badges. Um, we, of course, would prioritize our partners of the Global Advisor Group, but we should also foresee some guests, um, those who would be interested to listen what we are doing in our constituency. Uh, but we have to manage this process very carefully with the UNFCC Secretariat so that um, we don't too much um, make exclusiveness, but we also respect that this is a summit of a special constituency. So uh, when the UNFCC announces the, the registration for Bond Zone, there will be more updates. We are in continuous dialogue with the Secretariat teams. Uh, maybe if this question is also referring to the speaker slot, by the way, um, we would like to prioritize the political leaders as the, the, the top speakers, but depending on the agenda, we may have other partners from civil society, from uh, the, the, the major groups or uh, parties, uh, in, in particular at the highest level, at the ministerial level. Uh, there will be some balance, or some voices, but let's not forget this is the opportunity for our constituency, which is the, the networks and the local and regional leaders, to be showing their progress. So we have to prioritize them as well. Thank you, Eunice, and uh, thank you, Susan, uh, for both of you for further clarifying the uh, procedures on this. Um, it's not really a question, but uh, more of a comment as to uh, sharing of this PPT slides at the end of this webinar raised by Sally. So I can assure you that uh, not only the uh, recording of this webinar, but also the slides will also be shared uh, with everyone uh, via online, and you'll be informed um, from the knowledge management team of ICLEI accordingly. Maybe just so we can highlight that uh, from now on we had announced that the citiesandregions.org will be operationalized more actively in terms of the agenda and preparations and we'll also open a section and a tab on the UNFCC process which will include our previous webinar recordings, links and interventions in the May session and others also our, our, our previous uh, engagement and the previous COPs, uh, mainly through the local government climate roadmap and other constituency, so that this will be the hub to access to this information, including these webinars as well. Right. Thank you, Yunus. Um, at the moment, I uh, still see no further questions uh, or comments raised. So, like I said before, maybe uh, we hand over to Susan the floor so that she could provide us uh, further updates from the side of the city of Bonn when it comes to the uh, preparation for COP23. Okay, I'm, I'm taking over. <laughs> um, thank you, Jisun. Bonn is currently preparing to host the, not host, to venue host, um, the biggest COP ever, the biggest COP we ha ever had in Bonn. Uh, the building works are already in progress. Uh, the German Ministry for the Environment uh, and the UNFCCC are constructing uh, the temporary buildings, both in Rheinauer Park and close to the World Conference Center Bonn. As you will know, the um, negotiation zone, the Bula zone, will comprise the World Conference Center Bonn, the UN campus, and an annex complex of temporary buildings between Deutsche Welle and the Rhine River. From there, in about 20 to 25 minutes, walking smoothly, you get to Rheinauer Park, which is a huge recreational area. And there, another 25,000 square meters of temporary buildings will be constructed. This will be the bond zone, and this is actually the zone which is valid for all of us and for all our activities. It will be the home to the um, country pavilions. It will be the home to the um, 
side events. It'll be the home to the Marrakesh uh, agenda and uh, it will host all kind of presentations and activities. As Yunus mentioned, actually the process for non-admitted observer organizations has just opened. So if you want to apply for a side event, uh, please keep in, in mind that you create your account until 4th of September, that you finalize your application until 8th of September, and that you take a maximum of partners on board. There's a merger function on the registration tool of the UNFCCC. So please keep all that in mind when registering. So a multitude of side events will, will take place there of admitted and non-admitted uh, organizations. The summit of local and regional leaders will be in the middle of that conference zone and we're very proud of this. The conference zones will also be connected by bus shuttles, so this makes commuting quite comfortable. As for um, registration, Yunus has mentioned that you should double check whether you're perhaps registered from another angle, because most of the registrations for the summit will apply just for the Sunday. So should you need other registration dates because you um, have an own event, because you're a speaker elsewhere, try to make sure to get this registration from another source um, because um, all the registrations for the day are normally for the day. If you have a whole time registration for the bond zone, please um, tell us so that we don't have uh, double registrations. Otherwise, we're also preparing the accommodation of uh, a multitude of people, um, of the participants of the COP, but also of civil society coming to Bonn. Those have not having blocked their hotel accommodation yet, uh, please visit the site www.bonn-region.de, which will communicate it with a contact person uh, together with the PowerPoint. Otherwise, I'll be open to questions. Um, I think it's easier to, um, to answer your questions because most of you will already be familiar with some of the preparations um, and have specific questions. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, George just uh, raised a question uh, which regards to registration dates. The, so the question is, would it be possible to please include those registration dates for side events in writing? Um, I just had a text uh, issued by Megumi in Endo, which I will forward to Yunus and Chizun to include them. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Chizun, I'm not sure what exactly the question was from George. Uh, okay. Uh, George, would you like to further uh, elaborate your question regarding registration dates? I just unmuted you. Hello. Uh, yes, I was just asking about the the date that she was just mentioning in September fourth. I couldn't grab a uh, pen uh, quick enough. I, <laughs> no, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's what I said. Um, I forward that to you. Thank you. Um, just to, re to recap, uh, if you are representing an organization that is not accredited to UNFCC, George, this doesn't apply for you, Ikle, but for those who have not been involved, um, that is relevant for them. So those who are already accredited, like ICLE, this is already over. So these are the, for those who have not applied before. Uh, and if they want to host a side event during these two weeks, then they should apply this week. And then they should make sure their information is visible. And then these are the key, key dates as 4th of September and 8th of September, but not relevant for the staff of ICLE at this stage. I'm putting it in the questions. Okay, there you go. Uh, okay, thank you, Susan and, and Yunus. So, I see at the moment no hands raised and no other questions at the moment. Yunus, is there, uh, are there any further points that you would like to maybe uh, emphasize before um, further questions may come up? 
Well, um, we know uh, last week there was also a, a webinar uh, hosted by UN Foundation and ECLA US. So there are already regional preparations going on. Um, it's very likely this year there will be a couple of uh, unique new venues uh, and and we know uh, there will be a strong participation from the u.s stakeholders where there will also be visible at the cities regions pavilion as well as at the summit so these are the type of things that is evolving so like work in progress we are aware of that um and other than this i think uh one thing we should be expecting is that um there will be this summit will be a good uh, demonstration of the collaboration between the cities and regions. Uh, we're very happy with the way our partners from regional networks are also engaged. I see a number of them attending in this event. This will be a, a, a enabling us that this multi-level governance and holistic approach to sustainability and climate issues will be a, a highlight of the summit. Uh, I'm, that's why I think COP in Bonn will be a unique event. Taking into account this is also jointly caused by State of North Rhine-Westphalia and City of Bonn, which was again a unique demonstration. Uh, so these kind of uh, added values of this COP will help us to demonstrate that this COP will be an important milestone to create a precedent to the next years as well as um, in the preparations for 2018, where the, the national governments will start to review their national contributions, the NDCs, and if we can create that out of all these engagement this year, if we can create a momentum that there are some national governments who are, who are friendly to this concept, they commit that when they come to 2018, with the inspirations from the COP23 in Bonn and the summit, that they will be committing to work more actively with local and regional governments. I think this would be our biggest achievement and the, the support of the presidency uh, and uh, the UN secretary will be also instrumental in all these debates. So these are the, the things that we don't write explicitly now, but these will shape our outcomes, initiatives, and also the, the debates in Bonn. And we look forward to collaboration with all of our partners and, and, and friends. Thank you, Yunus. Um, in the meantime, we have another question raised by Belinda. Question is, how do interested parties apply for hosting a side event? Uh, I think, Belinda, are you referring to hosting an event at the pavilion? Um, yeah, during the um, Citizen Regions Pavilion, if a um, outside entity is interested in mm -hmm. hosting, let's say, like an hour and a half side event. Yeah. Yes, um, that's what we were uh, trying to finalize procedures and application process for that. And uh, let's recall, this is uh, an opportunity uh, that in the previous COP in, in, in Paris, we had a very intensive agenda because the suitability of the, the space and, and the, the availability of partners. This time, because the space is a bit limited, um, we are expecting that the agenda will not be that much intensive, but still there will be opportunities. Uh, a template will be circulated by the latest next week, early next week, to our partners, including ICLE offices, regional offices, and the Global Advisor Committee. And there we would be asking them to fill in their events. And we have already compiled a couple of options over the past couple of weeks and months. So we will already go back to these events, whether they're still interested and whether they would be able to do it in this pavilion space. So during the next couple of days, there will be this discussion. Uh, and you will receive the template from us and, and you can circulate or you can fill it internally and send back to us and then we will compile all of them and see what is the best uh, moments and, and which options are the most uh, convenient in terms of uh, participation and, and presence, yes. Thank you, Yunus. Um, is there anything that uh, you would like to add, uh, Susan, from your side to that? Uh, I think Yunus covered everything. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so at the moment, uh, no hands raised uh, from participants and no further questions. Uh, if uh, there are no further questions from the audience, I, I would say we move on to the uh, the wrap up and conclusions of today's webinar. So maybe Eunice, you can start your, your concluding remarks. Well, basically, uh, let's stay in touch. Uh, there are a couple of events will take place, especially in September. There will be more opportunities for us to engage. And there will be a fourth webinar in end of September. Until that time, I assume we'll have more clarity on on um, our agendas. Uh, we recommend you to follow the the website citizenregions.org um, for other additional updates and and look forward to meeting you all soon. Thank you, Eunice. And Susan, over to you for your concluding remarks. Thank you, Jisun. Um, first of all, thank you for attending this webinar and uh, thank you for the energy you dedicate to this COP, which will take place in Bonn. Our city is very proud to be uh, the venue where this can happen and we're hoping for a very successful uh, summit of local and regional leaders. Uh, which shows the strong alliance of local and regional networks and uh, governments uh, together for climate, uniting for climate. So we're very positive and uh, optimistic that all together it, we will be able to shape um, a good event and uh, a meaningful message. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, I still see no questions raised or hand raised. So I would like to conclude today's webinar here. My heartfelt thanks goes to both Yunus and Susan for sharing with us the latest information in the lead up to COP23 and the Summit of Local and Regional Leaders. And I would like to also thank each and every participant in today's webinar for contributing your input and sharing with us your questions that will also help us in preparing and organizing the uh, agenda for local and regional governments in the lead up to COP23. So with that, I would like to conclude today's webinar. Uh, this webinar is now closed. Thank you so much. See you Thank next you time. You soon. <laughs> Bye.